Welcome back to Hardcode. In this video, we'll explore multiple solutions to solve famous liquid problem too soon. We'll start with the brute force approach, then we optimize it using hash maps to achieve an efficient o of n solution. By the end of this video, you'll understand both the trade-offs and best practices for solving this classic problem. Let's dive in and mash this together. So the problem statement given is, given an array of integer nums and an integer target, return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice. You can return the answer in any order. So what does the problem ask us? So basically we need to return the two indices which add up to the certain target and then there would be only one solution. We don't need to deal with all the duplicates here. Okay. So here the order also doesn't matter, the indices order basically. So we can return like here in the example one, they return zero on light, we can return even one zero. So hope you're clear with the problem statement. So let's look into the examples here. So that would give you more idea. So this is the nums given, the target is nine. So basically what we need to return, we need to return the indices of the two numbers, which add up to the given uh, number. So here the answer is zero one. We can even return one zero. Here two seven add up to nine, right? So that's why we return zero one. So in the explanation also they given the same because nums of 0 plus nums of 1 is equal to 9 so we return 0 1. In example 2 we have nums as 3 to 4 target is 6 so here 2 and 4 adds up to 6 so that's why we return 1 comma 2 okay in example 3 we have target is 6 so both numbers together uh, add up to 6 so we return 0 1. So you're clear with what the question asked right so let's look into the constraints here. So here the nums length is in the enclosure range of 2 to 10 power 4 and nums of i that means to say that the each element in the nums is in the enclosure range of minus 10 power 9 to 10 power 9 and the target is also in the same range minus 10 power 9 to 10 power 9 only one valid answer exists this is the constraints okay so basically here as we see the nums length here is 10 power 4 is the maximum. So with this thing, we can uh, do n square solution as well. Here for this problem, n square is acceptable. So if they had given the nums of uh, something like 10 power 5 and all, then we can't do the n square solution. So for this problem, O of n is not, uh, I mean, asked. We can even submit O of n square. So but they, they gave us a follow up. Can you come up with the algorithm that is less than O of n square time complexity? So quick heads up. Why I said like if 10 power 10 it's not possible because a computer can perform only 10 power 8 operation per second. So if you do it with n square complexity that means that n square operations per second. So that is 10 power 8 operations per second. That is possible. If 10 power 10 operations per second it is not possible and time limit will be exceeded. Okay. Hope you got the idea of what I am saying. Uh, so here this is the boilerplate code given. Uh, here they defined a method to sum uh, which takes the nums and then returns the list of integers okay so hope you got the idea of what the input is and what the output is so let's dive into this before we get started i want to remind you about our exclusive blind and fair post this carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills these problems will ensure you're ready for anything even if the exact questions aren't asked they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So guys, I personally faced this question in one of the interviews for a product based company. There is a high chance that you would also get this. So sit back and relax. We'll leave that into two different approaches. So first is brute force approach guys. So brute force is nothing but basically trying all possible combinations. Okay. So what is the intuition for this approach? So in this approach, we check every pair of elements in an array to see if their sum equals to the target. So it's simple but inefficient as it checks all possible combinations. Okay, here as we discussed, like for this case, it's okay because n square is 10 power 8. If n square is 10 power 9 or greater, it would not be acceptable solution. Okay. So this is the intuition. We just need to check each possible uh, pairs of elements to see if their sum equal to target, and then we return the indices only. That's all. So let's look at the explanation. So first step is to loop through every pair of elements using two nested loops. Next is we have to check if the sum of any two elements equals to the target. So for the third step, we just need to check if the sum matches and then return the indices. That's all right. So very simple. Uh, so here we just put the same thing in code. So we iterate over all elements. This is standard approach. So here we start i from uh, 0 to uh, length of nums minus 1. So here that is taken care by range function. 
So basically range, the last element we provide is x closure, right? That's why uh, it would be only spanning up from 0 to n minus 1, where n is the length of the nums, okay? In the inner for loop, we have j in range of i plus 1 and length of nums. Why i plus 1? Because we should not consider i again. So if we consider i in the inner for loop, we'll end up checking i again, which is not required. That's why we do i plus 1. So let's say we have this nums 2, 7, 11, 15. So here we checking in the outer for loop, we're forming in the range of 0 to 3. Okay. So if we take again here in the range of G, uh, 0 to 3, that would be like we'll be checking each case. We're checking ij pair, right? So we'll be checking 2 comma 2 pair also, which is not required. That's why we do i plus 1. So we will be checking these two pairs. So what all pairs you would be considering? We'll be considering the, uh, 2, 7 and we'll be considering 2, 11, 2, 15. Similarly, we consider 7, 11, 7, 15 and 11, 15. So these are the pairs we consider. So that's why we have to do j i plus 1 to length of nums range. Okay. This is just step 2. We check if the sum of the two elements equal to the target. Uh, how do we check that? We just add the numbers. Nums of i plus nums of j is equal to target. We are checking. So if yes, we can return ij. If like other way around also we can do, we can return j i as well. Because they said the order doesn't matter here, right? We can return the answer in any order. Okay. So that's all. We solve the problem. So what is the time and space complexity? So firstly, the time complexity is of n square. Here n is equal to length of nums. Okay, and then so we are iterating that like twice. So it is n square. For a quicker look, if it is a nested for loop and iterating almost an i plus 1 to length of nums range, it's always n square. Okay, we, we don't care about this uh, little minor constant. So if you look closer, we're iterating in the outer for loop for n times and then in the inner for loop, it runs for n minus 1 because we checking from i plus 1. So multiplication would give us n square minus n. So this is always a negligible factor. So it is always n square. So n square is because we check every possible pair. Space complex is of one because we don't use any extra data structures. So I got the code ready here. Let me try running this. It is accepted for three cases. Let me try submitting this. So cool. It is accepted for all the cases we have. So guys, here O of n square is also accepted solution, but for in interviews, we will, they will be asking us O of n solution. So for that, we have to use a hash map. So what is the intuition here? The key idea is to use a hash table to store numbers we have already seen as we iterate to the list. This allows us to check in constant time if the complement of the current number, that is target minus current number is already in the hash table. So basically, why complement? So let's take an example of this case. Here we have given 2715. So first we visit 2 and then we store the 2 in our hash table. So and next we visit 7. So in that time what we check, uh, so basically we check if the complement exists. That means we check if 9 minus 7 already exists in the hash table. So if that is the case, then the sum is adding up to 9. We can just return the indices. Okay. That is the basic idea guys. So what is the key for this hash table? So key is just the number and then uh, the value is the index of that number. Okay. So as we discussed, if it is there, we have found the two numbers that add up to the target and we can return their indices immediately. So we don't need to even pass further actually. So here the explanation is the same as what we discussed. So firstly, we create an empty hash table that is hash table in Python. Uh, we can use dictionary as a hash table. Second step is to iterate over the list of numbers and their indices using the enumerate because uh, if we use enumerate, we'll get the number and the index as well. That's why you use enumerate here else we need to keep track of the index. This is the only reason we choose enumerate because we get the index and the number at the same time and we don't need to keep track of the index. Step three, we calculate the complement as target minus num. If the complement is already in the hash table, it means we have seen a number that when added to the current number equals to the target. So this is what we just discussed. Okay. After that, we just return the index of the complement stored in the hash table and the current index. Okay. So step four, if the complement is not found, store the current number and its index in the hash table for the future reference. So easy, right? Just a very simple observation only, nothing fancy. So guys, how does this hash table help here? So let's take this example 2711115. So our hash table, what it stores, what are the key and value for the hash table? This is key. For this key, there's a value associated. So value is index. Okay. So firstly we visit two and then the value is what 
we just store the index so one two three here the value for this two is zero so what is the thing we check for in hash table we check for nine minus two still it is not in the hash table so we don't need to return anything we just need to have this store in our hash table the next element is seven so for this seven what we check in hash table we check if nine minus seven exists in hash table so does it exist yes it does exist so for that too we just written the index with along with the current index so simple right we just discuss the whole approach here only so let's look into code now so firstly we just initialize the hash table okay and then we just iterating over the nums using the enumerate function which gives us the index and the num so here we are calculating our complement complement is equal to target minus num okay so target is what what the uh, number they given which is 9 so num is what we trading so in this case it is 2 firstly so just what we discussed we putting in the code nothing much okay so here we checking the complement exists in hash table and written the indices so how do we check that we just have this in uh, operator right which checks uh, the hash table so basically we checking if this key complement key exists in hash table and then if that exists we just return the that particular keys index uh, how do we get that particular keys index we just get this hash table of complement and then that would give us the value for this particular key okay so you look for a hash table of 2 it will give us 0 0 is the index so we return 0 along with current index i in the form of list so here we have this square braces right we are forming a list here actually so that's how we just written as uh, two indices in a list format so in the step 4 like in the case where with the complement not exists in the hash table we just store this so we show the current number and its index so hash table of nums of 5 would make the cre entries created in the hash table. So for this key, this value would be associated. So key is here number, value is our index. Simple guys, you got this. So what are the time and space complexities? Time complex is O of n, where n is the number of elements in the list. So O of n because we just iterate in the each element only once, okay? And also here the lookup happens in O of 1. This is very important, you need to be uh, considering of in hash table or dictionary. We have the lookups performed in O of 1 for the keys we have. So if you check like 2 in the dictionary, it would return in O of 1. It's a constant lookup. Also in set also, it is constant lookup, okay? First, what is the space complexity? It is O of n as we store up to n elements in the hash table. Very simple, right? It's like understandable only. So here, uh, if we have like length of array is 4, then we'll store up to 4 elements at the worst case. In the best case, we'll just return at second element only. Okay, so we should always calculate our complexes for the worst case scenarios. That's why we have it often. I got the code ready here. Let me try this. So this is accepted for the three cases. Let me try submitting this. So cool, this is accepted and this beats 92% of users. Very good solution. So congrats guys, you just learned it. I personally have faced this in one of my interviews. So most likely every interview, it's a basic question would ask like to get to know, like if you know the hash maps and all. So keep track of this question. Like it's very simple. It's just a basic observation. And that's a wrap on solving the two same problem with multiple approaches. If you found this pregnant helpful, make sure to drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more coding tutorials. See you on the next